Well, I've been getting a lot of requests from people that want to know how I actually do my Kemper profile. So I'm going to shoot a quick video on how I do that for you right now. And for today's demonstration, I'm going to be profiling the purple channel on my new Rev Generator Mark III. I'm also going to talk about all the gear that I use when I do my Kemper profiles. So basically how I have it set up is I have the Send 1 going into my KHE amp switcher, which is hooked to all of my amps. And I have the Return 1 coming from the monitor output on my mixer. Now you can just place one mic in front of a cab and hook it directly into the Kemper, but the reason why I use the monitor out from the mixer is because, as you can see, I have two cabinets here and I have four microphones hooked up. And now I can combine all of those if I want to by sending the monitor out to the Kemper as opposed to using one mic at a time. Besides that, I can use different mic pre's and get a better sound. And there are a couple reasons why I use the KHE amp switcher. Number one, obviously I can switch to any amplifier on the wall and profile it. And there are two more big reasons why I use the KHE amp switcher, because it's also a cab switcher and a cab blender. Let me explain. So as you can see, I have both of my cabs sitting here and they're mic'd up perfectly for the profile session. I could switch between each one of these cabs if I want to when I want to do profiles. So I want to do maybe 10 profiles on the diesel cab with different mic positions. And then I want to switch to the Mesa cab and do the same thing over there. But here's where it gets awesome. I can actually turn both cabs on at the same time and blend them for really nice profiles so I can have both cabs with all four mics going and have a really big sound. So right now I'll demonstrate each cab for you, starting with the diesel and then I'll go to the Mesa and then I'll show you what the blended cabs sound like. <laughs> That's freaking cool man I love this setup because now I can again switch between cabs very easily or blend them very easily and it sounds phenomenal and the other really cool piece of gear that I have is the Dynamount it's basically a robotic mic stand it'll move the mic anywhere I want it with the push of a button I have six sweet spots dialed in already on the app and it's saved in there. So anytime I press any one of these presets, it takes the mic and moves it right to that spot for me. And I don't have to get out of the chair. I don't have to guess. I don't have to get a flashlight out and see where the mic is pointing at the speaker. I already did that when I dialed everything in and saved the presets here. And now I can get different color and different tones and things like that on all of my profiles without having to leave the chair. I'm going to order another one for this cab so I can move them both around and get even more options. Because right now I'm basically moving these two mics by hand, which isn't so bad, but when you have really precise presets that you've dialed in carefully, that's really the better way to go. And it really helps with the workflow. All right, so now I have all the mics set where I want. I have sweet spot number one on the Dynamount already preset. All I have to do now is take the amp out of standby and I'm gonna basically dial it in real quick and make sure that everything sounds the way I want it to. And I'm gonna start with the profiles. Now, here's the thing. I do prospecting profiles first. Sometimes I can do up to 15 to 20 profiles before I get what I want out of a profile. What I'm looking for is obviously I want it to sound good and feel good. I want it to also duplicate what I'm hearing in my in-ears uh, on the Kemper. So I don't want any inaccuracies there. And I'm looking for a really good amount of definition naturally from the profiles. Now here's the thing, you can dial up definition if you want, but it's possible that if you don't have the amp dialed in properly for the Kemper to profile it the right way, you can get really low definition numbers and yeah, you can artificially turn the definition up in the Kemper uh, and kind of make up for that, but I'd rather have a natural amount of good definition without having to crank it in the Kemper. That tells me that I'm giving the Kemper the right amount and right type of information to capture the amp properly. So let's start with our first prospecting profile now and see where we're at.
Okay, that sounds really good in my ears. So let's go ahead and start our first profile and see what happens. Okay, so the Kemper just finished the profiling process and now I'm going to refine the profile with some riffs and check it out after that. So we're going to go ahead and label it so we can keep an eye on how many we're doing here for prospecting. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to check is definition. Now on this one, the definition is at zero. Literally, 0, 0.0. Let's just listen to it and see where we're at. Okay, that sounds freaking horrendous. So what I can do is turn the definition up if I want to, but that's not really ideal. I want the definition to already be at a good number, at least between 6 and 8 on a profile, so that I don't have to artificially add in definition to the profile. So let's go ahead and demonstrate dialing in the definition right now. I'll just turn it all the way up to 10. Eh, you know what, let's just go to 9 and... Uh, see what the difference is okay all right it improved it but it's a little on the shrill side for me and this is not a profile that I want to use the reason why this happens sometimes is because you might have too much gain in the amp or too much aggression in the amp and it's just making it kind of gooey and it just makes the definition go way down so one way to fix that is turn your gain down. So what I have on the amp right now, as far as the settings go, is I have the gain at 3 o'clock, and I have the aggression level on red, which is basically all the way up on the amplifier. So let's go ahead and turn the gain down and turn the aggression levels down, and maybe we can see uh, if that will fix the problem. So let's go ahead and do that now. So instead of red on the aggression level, I put it to blue and I turn the gain down to just over noon. Let's run another profile and see how it turns out. Okay, so let's go ahead and refine this one as well with the same riffs. All right, so let's check out the profile and see what we have. Let's go ahead and check the definition now and see if that's improved. Last one was zero, this one is 7.4. So, I think we made the right choice. We turned the aggression down by one. Remember, it was red, I turned it down to blue. And I had the gain at three o'clock, I turned it down to just over noon. And I still got plenty of gain here, according to the Kemper. So let's go ahead and play it and see what it sounds like. And then I'm gonna play the same riff on the Kemper and the amp and see how close they are to each other. Here we go. Alright, that sounds really good. Let's play the amp and the Kemper back to back and I'll show you how close they are to each other. Start with the amp. Okay, it's better, but it's not there yet. I want more fullness and a little more kind of chewiness and aggression. So I'm going to make a few more adjustments on the amplifier, and I'm going to change the riffs that I play a little bit and see if I can get it to sound a little better. Okay, I made a few adjustments, and let's go ahead and run the profile again and refine it differently and see what happens.
Okay, that's definitely better. We're moving in the right direction, but I'm still wanting more thickness. So what I'm going to do is change positions on the SM57 here with the dynamo. I'm going to go to an off access position and see if I can capture a little more low end from the cab and still have a lot of grit and really nice top end. But I think that uh, by doing this position change, I might get what I'm looking for. So one second, let's do another profile and see what happens. Okay, we got some good definition here. We got 6.1 this time, which is actually acceptable. So let's go ahead and see what this profile sounds like. Now I'm going to do what I always do and add my overdrive pedal to it and see what that sounds like. That sounds really good. So let's go ahead and compare the amp to the profile now and see how close we are. Now for the Kemper profile and I turned the overdrive pedal off. Okay, so there you have it. We actually arrived at a very close profile of this amplifier. I had to do a lot of prospecting profiles and I had to turn some knobs and turn the gain down. Remember, if you have the gain up too high, it can make the profile sound gooey and if you check your definition and it's really low numbers, gain is usually the culprit. So make sure you turn your gain down a little bit and clean it up so that the Kemper has more definition when it profiles the amplifier. If you have aggression settings on an amplifier, try it with it at your favorite settings, but if it's too much, turn that aggression down and adjust the gain accordingly, and maybe do some other adjustments with the mics and the riffs that you're playing, or the order that you play those riffs in. All of that stuff matters. Whether it's combined or one of those things, it always makes a difference in your profiles and how they turn out. So again, you can, if you get uh, a low definition setting on your profile, in other words, if it profiles the amplifier and the definition's at zero or below five, yeah, you can crank the definition up to kind of fix that, but it really doesn't sound good. Definition on the Kemper is more of a fine tuning tool. So let's say you profile the amp and it's at 7.8 and you want to get it up to like nine. Well, that's fine. You're just going to add a little bit there and it's going to sound really good and get that nice cut and that nice edge that you like on the top end without sounding shrill. But if you're at zero or three and you turn it up to 10, it's just going to get really thin and shrill sounding. And I suggest that you just make the adjustments on the amp, the mics or the riffs or all of those things to fix it. Now, Gain isn't always the culprit, but it's usually the first one that you go to to make those fixes that you need to get the definition to read the right way. So it's not always about your favorite settings on the amplifier in the room or even in your in-ears or monitors that will make the Kemper profile it properly. 
it's what the Kemper needs to hear so that it can profile the amp properly. And yeah, you have to make some adjustments and they might be out of your favorite settings, but at the end of the day, if the Kemper captures the amplifier properly and it sounds great, well, it doesn't matter what the settings are on the amplifier. What matters is how did the Kemper capture it? Does it sound awesome? Does it sound like your favorite settings? Did you trick the Kemper into thinking that the amp sounds a certain way and sounds more clear without all that gain in there? And afterwards, the Kemper profiles it right and it sounds killer. Well, that's all that matters. Well, like I said, I've really learned a lot over this last year and a half, and especially the last several weeks as far as profiling goes. And I haven't learned everything yet. I'm still learning more, but I wanted to share with you what I've learned so far, and I hope this helps you. And I also hope it helps you understand what goes into profiling, at least when I do it. It's a lot of work, and again, it's not a simple plug and play thing. You can't just slap a mic in front of a cab and push play and go. It really does take some tweaking and a lot of prospecting. And to be honest with you, there are many times that it takes anywhere from 19 to 25, maybe even 30 prospect profiles to get the Kemper to profile the amp properly. It might be little fine tuning things, but once I nail it, I can kind of fine tune it from there and really get a good profile pack set up for you guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode and it gave you some insight as far as what goes into doing Kemper profiles and all the gear that's involved with it as well. And to all my subscribers, thank you very much. And to everyone who's bought profiles from me, thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. Well, if you haven't subscribed, please do because I got a lot of great stuff coming up and I'll see you on the next one.